I have been backtesting different trading strategies and this reversal system really stood out because of how well it's performed in my tests. The best part is just how simple the setup is. There are no indicators, no complex calculations and no ambiguity. The trade either meets the conditions or it doesn't. Before developing a strategy, it's first important to understand some basic rules and conditions for it. The rules can be refined as I get more results from testing, so I keep it simple to begin with. So what are my rules for a reversal setup? I will start with a daily candle after trading has closed. I then compare it to the previous day's candle. Specifically, I'm looking at the high and low of each day. If today's candle has a lower low and a lower high, then this can be considered as an indication of weakness in the market. So what I'm looking for is a reversal after this candle. I don't buy immediately. Instead, I mark the day's high and I wait to see what happens on the next day's candle. If it continues moving down, then there is no trade. But if the candle breaks above the previous day's high, then I will consider that a reversal trigger and I will enter the trade at that price. That is the trade hypothesis. If the market shows weakness with a candle that has a lower low and lower high, but then that high is broken the next day, that is a signal of a reversal. I then hold that trade for the rest of the day and exit at the close. The profit and loss can be calculated between yesterday's high and today's close. But there is a catch with this calculation because occasionally there will be gaps between days. If the day gaps up and opens above yesterday's high, then my entry price won't get hit. In this scenario, today's open becomes my entry price. It's important that I capture this in my backtest, otherwise it's going to give me inflated results. Let's take a look at some real examples of this trade setup. On this S&P 500 chart, I've picked out a few trades that would be generated by the strategy. This candle here has a lower low and a lower high than the one before it, which indicates weakness. The next candle, however, breaks above this high, and that gives us our trade entry. And even though my strategy rules exit at the close of this day, you can see that this one could be held very profitably for a long time. Another example over here shows a couple of very similar patterns. We've got another lower low and lower high, followed by a break the next day. So I'd have my entry placed at this day's high right around here. And again, this is another one that could be held for quite a few days for a lot more profit. Same goes for this candle here. We have a lower high and a lower low, followed by a break above that. A good return if you just wanna take that one candle, but as you can see, it carries on for quite a while before the next downward section. Now I can start setting up my backtest. I'll be doing the backtest in Python. And the way I've laid out this code is that even if you're not familiar with coding, if you were to install Python and Jupyter Notebook, which is the software I'm using here, then you'll be able to modify this code, change the test, the parameters, and play around with it yourself without necessarily needing to know a lot about programming. So this is the structure of my backtest. I begin with just redefining the hypothesis for the strategy. I then import a bunch of libraries that I'm going to be using here, specifically Y Finance, which allows me to download data from Yahoo Finance. I then define the symbols that I want to test. I'm testing on the S&P 500. To get the symbol for that, I just head over to Yahoo Finance, search for S&P 500, and that confirms the name of that symbol. If I wanted to test something else, I just change this out, for example, to the FTSE 100. Alternatively, the code is set up to be able to test multiple symbols at the same time. So if I separate them with commas, I can test as many symbols as I want. Then I define my trading systems. I want to test a reversal system here and I'm going to compare it to a buy and hold because I'm going to use that as my benchmark. I start off with 10,000 as my starting balance. This isn't that important, it just gives me some context to the final values. I then define my start and end points in time which gives me a 20 year time period between the 1st of January 2000 and the 1st of January 2020. 
This down here is my backtesting function. So first I download the historical data from Yahoo Finance and then I set up my input triggers. So for a reversal setup, the high needs to be lower than yesterday's high and the low needs to be lower than yesterday's low. The buy and hold is always in, so that's just always true. Next, I see if the trade is actually triggered. So I check whether we had a signal yesterday and if today's high is greater than yesterday's high. Next, I calculate the entry price. And this is where I filter out my gaps because what I'm saying here is that if the open is above yesterday's high, then that means that there was a gap. So the entry price must be at today's open price. Otherwise, the entry price is yesterday's high. Whenever you see me adding this shift by one, it means that I'm referring to yesterday's values. Once I have my entry price, the rest of it is standard. I'm calculating the return for the system and for the buy and hold. I then calculate the drawdown. I then run that backtest function on both of my systems, which gives me all of the results. And now I can finally plot them out and see what those equity curves look like. Here you can see the two strategies side by side. Buy and hold is in yellow and is essentially just following the S&P 500 price over those 20 years because the strategy was in the market the entire time. The reversal is the one shown in blue, and you can see that it's significantly outperformed the buy and hold. The results from this equity graph look very promising, but the chart doesn't give the full picture, and things get a lot more interesting when I look in detail at the performance metrics. This next function down here is where I calculate all of those metrics. There's a lot going on here, so I'm not going to go line by line, but it's not as bad as it looks. I calculate things like the return, the annualized return, drawdown, the wins, the losses, the time in the market, the overall win rate, and so on. Just the normal kind of metrics that you'd want to have to be able to compare two strategies side by side. And now I can take a look at those metrics. Both strategies started with an initial investment of 10,000. At the end of the 20 year period, buy and hold was up to 22,200. The reversal strategy was on 51,000, a significant improvement. And that is reflected in their returns with buy and hold bringing in 122% while the reversal strategy brought in 413%. If I annualize it, you can see that buy and hold returned an average of just over 4% per year, while the reversal strategy was more than double that at 8.5. But the next metric is where it starts to get more interesting. And this is the time in the market. Buy and hold produced that 4% by being in the market the entire time. The reversal strategy was only in the market 15% of the time. So for the remaining 85%, that cash was free to be used on other strategies. So then if I take my return and divide it by the time in the market, I get a metric for the return by exposure. For buy and hold, nothing changes because it was always in the market 100% of the time. So the percentage is still the same, 4.07. But the strategies metric is 56.8, a significant difference. The next important metric to consider is drawdown. It's great to look at the potential profits, but it's equally, if not more important, to look at the potential downside. The worst drawdown for buy and hold was almost 57% and mentally would be a very difficult trade to continue holding. By contrast, this reversal strategy had a maximum drawdown of just over 10.5%, much, much less than buy and hold. So then I took the annualized return and I took this max drawdown and I calculated a metric called return over drawdown. This basically compares the upside against the downside. It divides the return by the maximum drawdown. So you can see that it's actually quite difficult to compare strategies based on just their profit and loss, their win rate and the equity curve. So I wanted a metric that takes in the annual return, the time in the market and the drawdown to give me one overall comparison. And that is my return by exposure over drawdown. And when all of those metrics are combined into one, I can use it almost like a score for a particular strategy. And using the score, the reversal strategy massively outperforms just a straightforward buy and hold. I also calculated a couple of other useful metrics, the win rate for either strategy, as well as the ratio of reward versus risk. The average winning trade was 1.2 times bigger than the average losing trade. Based on this, it looks like the initial hypothesis of this strategy is correct. So I can start to refine it and test it with slightly modified 
and rules for comparison. These are the additional scenarios that I will test. Firstly, my current strategy waits for a candle to have a lower low and a lower high, but it doesn't matter if the candle itself is red or green, i.e. whether it closed below the open or above. So the second scenario that I will test is where the candle has a lower low, lower high, and it also closes below the open, meaning that it is a red candle. The hypothesis here is that this is an even stronger sign of market weakness. So if there is a reversal signal after this, then I expect it to be more likely to be a winner. I'll also check the opposite of my initial strategy and look for a momentum continuation instead of a reversal. I will check if the candle has a higher high and a higher low and then enter on the break of that high. This requires a few small changes to the code. So let's have a quick look at that before looking at the results. The first thing was to change the number of systems that I'm testing. So now I have my reversal like before. I also have one called down reversal, which is where the close is below the open. I have my momentum strategy and I still have the buy and hold from before as a comparison. I update the backtest function to calculate the inputs for both of these, the down reversal and the momentum. And then I work out if those trades were triggered. And then we can skip ahead and look at the results. This is the same equity chart from before, but now I have the four systems all drawn over each other. The colors have changed a little bit. So now buy and hold is in red, looks the same as it did before. Reversal is still in blue and it still outperforms everything else. Down reversal, which is my refined hypothesis, is the line in yellow. And you can see it doesn't actually perform quite as well as the reversal strategy. And momentum kind of sits in the middle, starts off not that great and then improves in the second part. So again, from the equity chart, it kind of looks obvious which one is the best one. But like I did last time, I need to dig into the metrics and see what's really going on in all the little details. So if we bring up the start balance and final balances to compare, it's pretty clear reversal beats everything else, which goes hand in hand with the results shown in that equity chart. And the annual returns reflect this but it doesn't look as clear when I look at the time in market metric. The reversal strategy, like before, 15% of the time in the market. Down reversal is only 9%, so it is even more selective about the trades that it takes. The momentum strategy is less selective and is in the market 25% of the time. Now that I have this time in the market, I can look at return by exposure, 56.8 for reversal, but now down reversal actually has a better score, 57.22, simply because it's making a good return while being in the market even less. Momentum on the other hand, only 25.76, still much better than buy and hold, but really not in contention with reversal and the down reversal strategies. The max drawdown here, down reversal again takes the crown. So it seems that being more selective is giving it the better results. Return over drawdown is a little bit more mixed. So then we come to the metric that I use as a comparison for all of the strategies. This is the one that takes into account annual returns, time in the market and the max drawdown, combines them all into one and gives me an overall score for that strategy. Reversal, 5.37 like before. Buy and hold, only 0.07. Momentum, 1.84, but the down reversal strategy was 7.45. If we then add on win rate and average risk reward, it does look like down reversal is the better strategy. It doesn't trade quite as often, but the trades that it does take, they seem to be higher quality. These results tell me a few things. One, the strategy does improve when looking for a lower low and a lower high. Two, making sure that it is also a down day where the close is below the open seems to improve it even further. And three, the strategy massively outperforms the buy and hold, even more so than the equity chart seems to show. It doesn't take very many trades, but the ones that it does take are high quality and profitable. There are some things to keep in mind though. I haven't accounted for trading fees, tax implications, and any dividends that may be paid out by the buy and hold strategy. These things will affect the results, which is why it would be important to do more detail testing and possibly demo trading to see if this really holds up.
Just because it worked in the past doesn't mean that it will work in the future. But regardless, I hope this was interesting and maybe even sparked a few ideas. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.